some ideas for a cold soup that she wanted to make, something without tomatoes. So we talked about this and that, and I think she's going to make something with cucumbers and yogurt, and I'm sure it'll be delicious. But as we talk, I realized that I know the best cold soup there is, and I haven't made it in years, so I'm going to take care of that. So in honor of this uh, heat wave, I'm going to prepare a classic dish from the Mediterranean coast of Spain called ajo blanco or uh, white gazpacho, you can call it if you like. It's probably the original um, gazpacho. It's very easy to make. It only takes a couple of ingredients, most of which you probably have on hand. And it's so delicious and cool and refreshing in, in summer. So um, I have to shop for just a couple of things. I don't need much. I have some good Spanish olive oil. Uh, I have good uh, vinegar and what else do I have? We just um, need to grab uh, a couple of things. I just need some almonds and bread and some fruit for garnish. That's about it. So uh, come in with me and uh, we'll do a little shopping, okay? Okay, so we need some flavorful white bread this one this one should be just fine yeah I want something fairly large so it will have um, not so much uh, crust to go along with the crumb because it's the crumb that we want not the crust a handful of green grapes this is more than I really need, but they look like nice ones, so we'll find a use for them. Okay, so here's a good chunk of watermelon. Looks pretty good, and it's seedless, so I'll get a nice yield from that. Okay, so our last ingredient is some almonds, and you can get sliced or slivered. I think slivered should do it. Now what is this uh, 10 ounces? Okay, that should probably be enough. Okay, so we have our ingredients, so let's head back to the kitchen. Come with me, thank you. We're going to start with 8 ounces of slivered almonds. That's about a cup and a half. So put those into your blender and uh, start to process those. You can pulse them and you have to stop and, uh, uh, to, and uh, stir it down every once in a while. And uh, add to that some salt and uh, a great big old pinch of cayenne. Uh, that'll really wake up uh, the flavor of this dish. So uh, get the almonds ground as granularly as you can. It kind of depends on the uh, design of your blender, um, how uh, wide it is at the bottom, and how the how things are going to uh, how things are going to sit in the bottom of the blender. And uh, you're going to have to probably add some um, uh, liquid uh, before too very long. Uh, to this, uh, but uh, give it a few, um, give it a few goes, scrape it down, and um, see how smooth you can get it. Um, then you want to add to that your garlic, your two cloves of garlic, and um, again, uh, let's try to get those uh, also uh, finely processed and uh, distributed throughout the almonds. So. Uh, when uh, you add a little bit of liquid to it, that should help to give you a paste that the machine can handle better. So keep working on that, scrape it down a couple of times, and add a little more liquid. Get it as smooth as you possibly can, and then we're uh, going to move along to our bread. That's the next ingredient. So I've got that big, uh, big loaf that um, uh, that you saw me buy at Agatha and Valentina, and uh, we're going to use uh, not even half of that. Uh, we want to start by uh, removing the crust because it's just the crumb that we want, and uh, 
how much uh, liquid you're going to end up using in your soup it depends on how fresh the bread is so if the bread is very fresh you'll need less if your bread is very stale and dry then you'll need more water so um, just add accordingly you want to uh, dice the bread um, three or four ounces uh, depending on whether or not it is um, fresh or stale and cube that up a couple of cups of bread cubes and uh, I just uh, I usually just put them right in with the ice water to uh, moisten them so that they will process so moisten them and then you can uh, transfer them to the blender and now you have enough liquid that you can get a really good torque going in there on that uh, on that mixture so uh, you can get this nice and smooth and uh, we just have two more ingredients to add uh, I have a really really nice sherry vinegar here which is a great choice this bottle by the way was a gift from my friends Arcadia and Tanya so thanks thanks guys this is a wonderful um, vintage sherry vinegar it's at eight uh, percent acidity so we don't want to use too much just a tablespoon or two so we'll work that in and then we'll start to uh, process in the um, uh, olive oil, the good fruity olive oil, until it's nice and smooth and creamy. So at this point you want to chill it extremely well and then um, when you're ready to serve it you can correct the seasoning and the texture if you need to. Uh, here's my nice piece of watermelon. Uh, to make watermelon balls you first take your ball or uh, hold it sort of flat against the fruit and press it down first then um, flip your wrist up and around so that's how you get the roundest uh, melon balls so um, this is a uh, seedless watermelon so the yield should be pretty good on this and then uh, with what's left uh, we can make uh, juice for wonderful drinks and cocktails and things you don't have to use watermelon you can use cantaloupe or honeydew or crenshaw or whatever's around so uh, taste the soup um, uh, add a little salt if it needs it um, thin it with a little more ice water if it needs it and serve it up nice and cold garnished with your fruit I hope you enjoy this the recipe is at brucebeckinthekitchen.com please drop in say hello i'd love to hear from you always